So, Jesse Smollett has returned to a Chicago courtroom on Monday to plead not guilty to felony charges that he lied to police over a hoax attack he was accused of making up last January. Smollett, who is 37 years old, has been charged with six counts of felony disorderly conduct during Monday's hearing. Moments after he arrived, Abel and Olash Oshudairo the two Nigerian brothers who say he paid them to attack him showed up at the courthouse with their attorney. She told Daily Mail last week that the pair were prepa- prepared to testify for either side in the case and they want Smollett to, take, to tell the truth. Immediately on Monday morning, Smollett's attorney filed a motion to dismiss the charges. He then pleaded not guilty across the board. Last March, Smollett pleaded not guilty to 16 counts of the charge in the same courthouse last year. Just weeks before the Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox office abruptly announced he was dismissing the case, angering police and city hall. Smollett told police that two masked men attacked him as he was walking home in the early hours of January 29, 2019. He said they made racist and homophobic insults, beat him and looped a noose around his neck before fleeing, and that at least one of his attackers was a white man who told him he was MAGA country, a reference to President Trump's campaign slogan, Make America Great Again. He also said they made the code in the N-word. So Nigerian brothers, Hebo and Ola, uh, were then identified by police as the people said it attacked them. The pair knew Smollett and told the authorities he paid them to attack him in a staged incident to allegedly boost his celebrity profile and salary. Smollett was then hit with 16 counts grand jury indictment and faced more than 50 years behind bars. Until state attorney Kim Fox suddenly dropped all the charges last March in exchange for him doing community service. It was a decision that blindsided and outraged Chicago's former mayor, Ram Emanuel, and former chief of police, Eddie Johnson. Smollett, who has all along insisted his innocence, then sued the city for malicious prosecution. His attorney, Tina Glandian, issued a statement on Tuesday and said, the attempt to re-prosecute Mr. Smollett one year later on the eve of the Cook County State Attorney's election is clearly all about politics, not justice. There have been various rounds of civil litigation, but the cases have been delayed because it has been so difficult to identify an impartial prosecutor. Webb was eventually brought in to examine the case. The saga began on January 30th last year when he emerged that Smollett claimed he'd been a victim of a racist anti-gay attack. At the time, it seemed he had been walking home from Subway in the middle of the night after returning home late on a delayed flight when he was approached. He told police afterwards his attackers identified him from the show he was on, Empire, and called him both the N-word and uh, F-wit. He said he beat him, put bleach on him, then put a noose around his neck. Smollett then went back to his apartment where his friend Frank Gaston was. It was Gaston who insisted he called the police. When officers arrived, the actor refused to hand over his phone. He went to the hospital to be checked over but had no major injuries. The Chicago Police Department vowed to investigate the incident with all its might and celebrities around the world rushed to share their support of Smollett. He became a household name almost overnight, but as the police investigation progressed, leaks began from within the police department that all may not have been as it seemed. As the controversy grew, Smollett determined to make his case when on Good Morning America where he cried and insisted he was telling the truth. By then, Chicago PD had released um, grainy surveillance footage of two men walking near the scene of the incident itself.